What's going on everybody? Captain Cody Davis here. Welcome to another episode of Tight Splice Charters. I'm just getting the boat ready for a couple of trips I have coming up and thought it'd be a really good time just to do a really quick video for you guys on what you should have tied on for Lake Okeechobee if you plan on coming within the next two months, I would say, April, May, and into early June. I know I just did a video explaining the frog and jig thing, how it's my favorite way to catch them and that's the best baits, but you know, us bass fishermen, we like to carry 78 rods with us any time we go fishing. So try to give you guys a couple of other options to have as well. So I'm just going to kind of breeze through them, uh, explain kind of how to present them, what's going on with them. And that's it. If you guys have any questions about my rod and reel setups, because I'm not going to get into that line, what style or what company uh, bait I use, what have you, just feel free to ask in the comments and I will answer them best I can. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of go first in order here. Uh, one, it's just a swim bait. This is a Gambler Big Easy. This is probably the most popular swim bait on Lake Okeechobee. Uh, in any kind of bluegill pattern is a very good option. You know, the lake's getting really skinny right now. Uh, we're fishing in water that's sometimes under a foot. Really, really shallow. The bluegill are up there spawning. Uh, this is a really good way to cover water down here, whether it's in January and February and even into the summer months. Swim this just under the surface, uh, you know, as like a wake bait, if you will, or even just buzz it on top like a top water, like a buzz bait sort of deal. And they come up and hammer it. Uh, I had a trip yesterday and this was what it was all about. Uh, my people probably caught 50 fish. Biggest one was probably eight, eight and a half pounds smoking this thing uh, i've got a whole pile of them laying here in the bottom of the boat uh this is a very very good one especially if you're new to the lake and just need to cover water definitely have you some kind of swim bait that you prefer to use tied on again in any kind of bluegill pattern uh the next one <clears throat> the one i just did a frog preferably a popping frog i kind of said it in one of my other videos we don't typically have scum or topped out grass here to throw like a regular spro bronze eye frog on top of or a pointy nose frog as i call it uh we're kind of throwing this to the base of you know uh buggy whip clumps flat reed clumps kissimmee grass pepper grass uh so you want something that cr creates some commotion on top this popping frog is a killer out here for the next three months. Some giant, giant fish get caught on this thing, and most tournaments are won on it as well. Uh, it's no secret. I'm not letting a cat out of the bag, uh, but definitely have you one tied on. A lot of people that come down here don't have confidence in the popping frog, but this is a bait that you might only get three, five, eight bites a day on sometimes, but they're going to be the right ones. If you're looking to get a really big bite, definitely tie this guy on. I think it really excels in this shallow water because the big ones are very smart and they don't get a very good look at this. So looking at it from underneath, puts off a big profile, looks like an injured bluegill, uh, and they hammer it. Fish it, obviously. Fish this on some heavy, a heavy rod with some heavy line because you're going to get big bites and you got to get them out of that stuff. Uh, next one is just regular Texas rig for flipping. This is a three quarter ounce. This is what I use. You can get away with a quarter ounce right now. The lake is getting super skinny and it's going to continue to fall as we go through the next three months here. Um, but I'm, I always have a three quarter ounce on whether it's January, March, April, December, September, all 365 days out of the year. I have this rig tied on. Uh, but I did think about going to a half ounce, but I'm lazy and I didn't want to cut the three quarter ounce off. The other thing it's helping me do is get through any slightly thicker grass, uh, that I can find. Uh, like I mentioned, the lake's getting really skinny. So anything that's a little bit thicker provides some shade, provides some cover for these fish to hide under to ambush those bluegill under. And this is just helping me get through it a little bit better. Uh, as for the bait on here, any beaver style bait with a pretty big profile right now is your best option. Uh, you know, Reactions, Innovation, Sweet Beaver, that new Gambler Stinger, uh, the Bruiser Avenger is a good one. Uh, you know, obviously, a react uh, I think I already said a Sweet Beaver. Missile Baits D-Bomb is one of my favorites. Any beaver style bait is going to get you bit. So definitely put this guy on. You're going to get a lot of bites on this as well, and you have a chance at a real big one. What do we got next? Next, everybody's favorite. A stick style, a Senko style bait, whatever you want to call it. This is just a really good way to get bites. Uh, if you find yourself in a crowded area with a lot of people, 
this is a good one. Throw this, this is on mono right now, but throw it on 17, 20 pound mono or fluorocarbon. This is kind of Okeechobee finesse fishing. Another thing is we're in early April now, but we just did have a cool front. Don't be surprised if, you, if we have another wave of bass come in to spawn on top of the bluegill. We did catch a lot of fish peeing. I did catch some fish that were on a bed the past couple days, so we do have a late wave of fish coming in to spawn. This is an excellent bait to catch them, especially in those high pressured areas. You could switch this out for a swimming worm as well. Uh, that's been working really good. Making long casts with just any isolated cover you can find, uh, as well as just dragging it around like you would a ribbon tail worm. It's very subtle, it's very finesse, if you will. And uh, they've been hammering it. Been catching a lot of big fish on this, and so have my clients. Uh, just as much as they hate throwing it, you can't deny the fact that it works very well, especially just throughout the whole state of Florida, any time of year. Two left, what do we got? Swim jig. This is a black, a June bug color, uh, but you need, if you have one tied on, but you want to have a white, a black and blue, and a brim color bluegill pattern in your boat. Uh, the water was really clean where I've been fishing, and I still did catch some on this. Uh, I fished with my wife the other day, and she smoked me. I mean, she was catching four to my one, throwing a bluegill color, more of a natural color. Makes sense throwing it in that clean water. I was a little bit lazy to switch, and this is my confidence color, so I kept at it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a great way, along with the swim bait, to cover a lot of water down here if you are new to Okeechobee. You, they've been eating this in the thickest stuff you can find and the sparsest stuff you can find. As long as you're around bluegill beds, you're going to get bit. Trailer, it doesn't really matter. This is a swim bait trailer, a gambler, a little easy. But I've been catching a lot on, like, the bruiser baits, crazy craw, a craw-style bait something that moves a lot of water and just really burning that thing around that sparse cover around those bluegill beds, catching a ton of fish on that. Uh, you know, my wife, like I mentioned, smoked me. I do have a video of a day we had, I think we had 23, 24 pounds. Um, I'll be posting it here shortly. Kind of gives away where I've been fishing. So I'm kind of waiting for that bite to die, but look forward to that video. She catches a couple real nice ones on a big swim jig. And I think I catch a couple on the swim jig as well. Uh, Get a lot of bites on this. You have the chance at the real big one. You can cover a lot of water. So very versatile and a really good way to get big bites. Just don't be afraid to play around with the colors. Don't just stick to one color. And last but not least, I just did the whole video on this, but I'm gonna go over it again for those who didn't see it. A big flipping jig. Uh, this is again, like the frog. You're fishing for five bites when you pick this guy up, typically. As of late, we've been getting anywhere from 30 to 60 bites on the jig because it is the best brim imitator you can use down here in Florida. I mentioned it before in my other video, typically throughout the rest of the country, for, you know, as a, there's a couple of us other states that don't fall into this category, but most of them you are flipping a jig to imitate a crawfish, not here. You want this to look like a dead or dying bluegill uh, or just a brim in general falling in front of their face. Hence the big trailer, uh, it's got a missile D-bomb on there, but any big a gambler mega daddy is a huge one down here, a really big chunk, uh, what have you. Brandon Medlock just won the Coast or the Toyota series earlier, I guess later, la late last month, uh, flipping a jig. That's all he does. He's one of the best in the world at it. And uh, there's for good reason, because it catches giant fish. Pitch this thing to any isolated cover you can find. Uh, don't be afraid to try and finesse this thing down into the middle of the cover as well, where you would typically flip like a beaver style bait. Uh, we've been getting a ton of bites on this, throwing it, just pitching it around to literally single strands of grass. Anywhere that there's brim beds, you're gonna get bit on this. As I mentioned, typically you're fishing for five to eight bites flipping a jig, but as of late, it's been unreal. The fact that it imitates a brim so well and these fish are so keyed in on bluegill, crazy days a really good friend of mine had 72 fish on a jig the other day uh or 72 fish and he said 65 of them came on a jig i had a couple 30 fish days myself on the jig with you know some seven and eight pound fish as well so don't be afraid to put this on and pitch this thing around and just stick it out you're fishing okeechobee you're down here to catch big fish you can catch all the small ones you want anywhere else in the country you come to okeechobee you want to catch the big ones so fish a bait that's going to enable uh, increase your chances of getting that giant bite and that's it. Another one that I don't have tied on because it's not my forte, if you will, but it's a, it, I'm stupid for not having one in my boat, 
is there like a lipless crankbait or a rattle trap. These fish are slowly transitioning also into summer mode where they're gonna be feeding up on shad and just really just feeding on anything that's way on the outside of the lake, on the outside edge. And throwing that rattle trap or even a Zara spook to some schooling fish is a good one. Uh, but those are just my confidence baits for this time of year. That's the way of fishing I like to fish. So that's what I have tied on. And uh, possibly a lot of you watching this, you know, are in that ballpark as well. That's what you like using. Come down here. Uh, if you don't want to tow your boat, give me a call. Uh, like I said, I had a good trip the other day. Uh, obviously, trips are slowing down with this whole coronavirus pandemic going on. But I did was able to get some locals to come fish with me, and we killed them. 40 fish, biggest one was eight and a half. Uh, a couple, I think a six and a couple of fives. Awesome day on the water. They, you know, had a ball and it was only a four hour trip. So uh, on top of that, fishing's great. It's only going to get better into the summer. Definitely give those baits a try, not only here, but on your home water. And uh, if you guys have any questions about the tackle or the brands that I use, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll answer them as best as I can. I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, keep, out for more, uh, keep an eye out for more videos, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.